Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, George Widom. Hey everybody, it's George Widom reporting for Widom's World. This week's question comes in from Jim Bray. He writes, I use a Rode NT2 condenser mic and the MicPort Pro preamp from Sentrance. I have a Mac and an iPad and I'm very interested in using my iPad in the booth for noise purposes. As of now, I use the iPad to mirror my computer screen and control my recording sessions that way, but I've just purchased the necessary equipment to go from the MicPort Pro to the iPad. The question I have is this, do I need an M-Box in addition to the Sentrance MicPort Pro? Or is that enough? I know you said in a recent video that there could be as many as five steps in the chain between and including the mic and the computer. Is that necessary with a setup such as mine? Thank you so much for your generosity and knowledge, best Jim. Well, you're welcome, Jim. Yeah, there's a few things in here that uh, I, I want to question. So you must have purchased um, a battery pack or a USB hub, something like that. I would have to assume that's what you mean by the necessary equipment. If that's not what you mean, then please do leave a comment down below in the in the YouTube comment section, and we'll continue the conversation there after, after you've watched this. But I will assume that you mean you've got what you need to make the MicPort Pro work with the iPad. Because unfortunately, they're not designed to work together out of the box. It takes a little bit of a kludge. Uh, first kind of developed by my good uh, client and friend, Bo Weaver, um, he actually figured out a, a workaround to make these things to these two things work together, and uh, I wrote or he wrote a blog about it, and I posted it on my website. Oh, geez, this must be four years ago, whenever the iPad first came out. So I'll have a link to that if you're interested. Um, but the thing is, is that you don't need really any more than that to record good quality audio, as long as you have the mic preamp that's clean with low noise, and it works well with the microphone that you're using. And I would surmise that that mic with the MicPort Pro will work together just fine. As long as you have a low noise recording that's clean and accurate, that is really what matters to you. That is the most important thing of all. The only reason to have more equipment, the chain or the steps in between the two, is if you're looking for something that's more elaborate in terms of functionality. Let's say you need to be able to tie your microphone into other equipment, such as a, an ISDN codec or a telephone hybrid, or you want to use a second computer with Skype, or I don't know, you know, whatever the situation. If you really need to have more equipment in, involved, sending and routing audio around your studio, yeah, then maybe you need more equipment. But the technology that's in the MicPort Pro is every bit as professional in regards to audio quality. Well, stand the test of time of daily hard use? You know, maybe not. You know, it was designed to be extremely lightweight and portable, and in doing so, there are some compromises made in the design. You know, interestingly enough, timing-wise, Sentrance is coming out with a device that is specifically designed to work with an iPad or an iPhone called the Mixer Face. And I think it's coming out sometime June, July, sometime midsummer but it has a self-powered design. It can be powered from a power supply or it has a lithium battery built in. So you don't have to have any kind of a kludge using a USB hub or USB battery pack to power it. It's a plug and play situation and it takes the MicPort Pro qualities and functions and just steps it up a huge notch. So stay tuned for that mixer face. I'm pretty sure I'll be getting one as soon as they're available. And uh, I'll certainly be sharing one with you. Don't need anything else than that. The M-Box is just another flavor of a MicPort Pro at the end of the day anyway. So uh, keep it simple. Recording directly to the iPad instead of going through another computer and mirroring and remote controlling may end up being the easiest way for you to go. You just may find that while recording on the iPad is a piece of cake, especially using Twisted Wave, editing may not be quite as easy and you may still find you'll prefer editing what you've recorded on your iMac or your desktop Mac. And using something like Dropbox as an intermediate 
between the two to transfer files from one to the other is really easy and fast. So that may end up being the best way for you to go. So let me know what you find after you've tried this. And again, leave those comments down below. And if you'd like to have your question answered just like Jim did today, please do send it in to widomsworld at edgestudio.com. I'd be happy to address it. And if you want more one-on-one -on -one support, if you have a question that's highly specific to your studio or you have technical issues causing noise or anything bizarre and you really would like to get attention quickly, please do look me up over at vostudiotech.com and click on the Get Support Now button at the top of the menu. I'd love to uh, get to the bottom of it with you and that's way we can work together in short notice and get it solved quickly. So again, I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on another Widom's World.